Today we're heading for the capital city, Ankara. As we saw earlier, the present Republic of Turkey was established in 1923 under its leader Mustafa Kemal. We heard how General Mustafa Kemal, after the First World War, had left Istanbul and his army post, raised an army and led the Turks to victory over the foreign forces trying to take over Anatolia. Congresses held in 1919 led to the formation of a Grand National Assembly which met in Ankara in April 1920. All foreign forces having been driven out, a new Turkish nation was to be established. Then, wisely, I think, it was decided that the new nation, the new republic replacing the Ottoman regime, should have a capital elsewhere than Istanbul. Our first visit in Ankara is to the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations. I'm not into museums these days, but I found the stuff that got here quite interesting. I'm beginning to think that wherever you scratch the soil in Anatolia, you will find some relic or artifact of an ancient civilization, a civilization which perhaps formed a strand in the long and complicated story which led over the centuries to what we call our civilization. We learn at school, or we did in my day anyway, that this story had its beginnings in Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent. We also heard about ancient Egypt and then took a leap over the Mediterranean with a quick glance on the way at Minoan Crete and then land in Greece, which we are told is the birthplace of our democracy. Well, yes, the vital roles played by these civilizations is obviously important, though the question, what do you mean by democracy, is an important but separate question. But what about the civilizations of Anatolia? Why don't we hear more about them? From what we have seen already, they seem to have played an important role in the total story. And that's leaving aside for just now the vital role which Anatolia and Syria played in the early history and development of what we call Christianity. Our second visit in Ankara is to the mausoleum of Atatürk, the father of the Turkish Republic. It is actually a military site. On a plaque here is Atatürk's last message before his death in 1938 to the armed forces, and I'd like to read you a short passage from it. If you saved your country from oppression, tragedy and enemy invasion in the most critical and difficult times, I have no doubt that in the fruitful era of the Republic, Equipped with all the modern weapons and means of military science, you will conduct your duty with the same loyalty. Our great nation and I are sure that you are always prepared to carry out your duty of defending the honor of our country and our civilization against any danger from insider or outside.
in 1934, Atatürk wrote a tribute to the Anzacs who were killed at Gallipoli. These are the words which are inscribed on the memorial, which you may have seen in Turkey Part 1. You are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmets to us where they lie side by side now, here in this country of ours. You, the mothers who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well. Just enough time left now to look at a couple of important sites in Ankara. Tomorrow morning we set off towards Bursa, stopping at Gordion on the way. We note in passing this gigantic copy of an artifact from the Hattian era, that's pre-Hittite. There's much more to see in Ankara, there's much more to say about Ankara, but oh, don't forget that we are on an initial quick reconnaissance tour. So here we are, heading towards another story which we all know. This story involves King Midas, the Gordian Knot, and eventually Alexander the Great. And no doubt, like me, especially because Alexander is involved, most people take it to be a Greek story. And yet this story started here in Phrygia, well before 700 BC. These large mounds you see here are actually graves, sort of pyramids made by piling up soil on top of a wooden structure, rather like a log cabin, which housed the coffin. Now, the later kings of Phrygia were alternately a King Midas, then a King Gordius, then a King Midas, then a King Gordius, and so on. Around one of these King Midases grew the legend that everything he touched turned to gold. And yes, this large burial mound is probably that of this particular King Midas. So what's this Gordian knot then? Well, one story says that it was the knot which a chap called Gordius used to hitch his ox cart to the oxen's yoke. Well, one day he was on his way on his ox cart to the Phrygian capital, probably to do some marketing, and found that A. The king had recently died, and B. An oracle had prophesied that a man on an ox cart would come into the capital and bring peace to the kingdom which was now suffering from factional strife. The unsuspecting Gordius found himself being made king. For some reason this Gordian knot had been preserved and the story went round that whoever could undo the knot would be master of Asia. So of course when Alexander the Great came along, he couldn't resist this, could he? And he just used brute force and ignorance as the people usually do and chopped it in two with his sword. Anyway, we're pressing on now towards Bursa and very shortly we're going to have a break. And Air Force. Yes, there's an Air Force base near here. And I'm going to see if there's any lentil soup in the cafe in the shopping centre. And then it's on to Bursa, the first capital of the Osmanli Turks.